the third note was introduced and the this thing would sound like Om Bhur Bhuvasva Om Tat Savitur Varenam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahe Dhyo Yona Prajodaya Is very specific to a raga. 
and Cosmo will demonstrate uh, this ascending and descending pattern for a Radha Shri. So on the same scale, in the ascent, the rag we are taking is Shri. The third and the sixth are omitted. So the ascent will sound like Sa Re Ma Pa Ni Sa. And descent has all seven notes. Sa Re Ma Pa Ma Ga Re Sa. And there may be ragas sharing the same set of notes. But the ascent and descent is different. So if instead of this I would sing like Sa Ga Ma Da Ni Sa, this could be called a separate rag called Vasan. So the identity starts differing from the very first rule, the ascent and descent. So let's continue with the example of rag Shri. Uh, Hindustani music is, uh, is is based on the concept of nyas swaras. So, like these are the swaras, the notes. We are going to indicate them with stars. So these are the swaras in which we are allowed to rest for a while. And the other set of swaras are used in transitions. And even within nyas swaras, resting swaras, resting notes, there are some swaras which are more uh, dominant than other. And this, uh, like these are often referred to as vadi and samvadi, and the most dominant note of a raga is called as vadi. Uh, in this example, the ri, the second note indicated by three stars, is called as vadi, and it's the melodic center for this uh, for this raga. So, as Sankal has mentioned, if we go more close to the raga, there are not equal weightage. The ascent would sound like Sa Re Ma Pa Ni Sa. So we have seen on Re Pa. The rest is larger than what was there in Ma or other notes. So these are called the Nyas Pa. And Indian Hindustani music is developed based on these nyaswars, and as mentioned, the re re is the melodic center for this rag. So we always try to approach this melodic center called the vadiswar, like. So a set of these phrases 
comprise like or provides an identity to a identity to a data. These uh, specific set of phrases are called as packets, the catch phrases, and these are the main cues to the listener, important cues to the listener to identify a data. Maybe uh, uh, and this. So we have seen like what is the sequence of notes while comprising like while following these phrases. But uh, each of these note used uh, in this phrase has to be sung in a particular intonation, uh, a particular way to approach uh, and go away from that note. And possible demonstrates about the intonation patterns for phrases in this one. So beyond melody in terms of pitch. Volume and timbral dynamics are also very closely associated with the phrases of the rap. So if I want to express the actual personality of a rap, I should include the phrase like, intone the phrase like. Pure notes and sharp notes can't be done. 
The third one is gamma. So gamma are fast oscillation, but it includes a stress with it. So in between two notes, so if I want to make it fast, so from both sides it can be done. So we are approaching the from so this is called gamma and current is the touch note. So while we sing one note, we get the touch of the vicinity note but not other. But we don't say it. And the final one mostly used is the khatka. This is a bit complex movement, but a jerk could be a good word to explain. So these are the basic alankas used in this one. So next we go to rhythmic organization of Hindustani music. Uh, rhythms in Hindustani music are organized in terms of cycles, uh, determined by the rhythm of Tala. But uh, here we have taken an example of Teen Tal, which has 16 strokes. Uh, and each stroke uh, in, on Tabla is, is called as a bowl. And Kostu will demonstrate uh, Tinta and also some of the talas which he is going to use in the like concert after this talk. So, tala is the rhythmic framework. So we divide the whole cycle into sub cycles. So the example we have taken is called a tin tal. So each syllable is called a bowl and. From the tabla, so I'll just play out the bowls how it's played. So it's dha din din dha, dha din din dha, dha din din ta, ta din din dha. It the 16 bits constitute the whole cycle. But the major role of the rhythmic accompaniment is not, not just to keep rhythm. So it's equal important duty for both the artist and the accompanist to keep the rhythm. But the main role of the accompaniment, both melodic and rhythmic, is to enrich the whole performance by complementing it. So the intonation, as we saw in the melody, there are prosodies. So it should sound very lively. So when we read out the theka, the structure, it sounds like dha dhan 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 dha, tik dhan 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 dha, tik dha dhan 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 dha, ta tik dhan 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 dha. So how would it sound? So the bass drum is used for this modulation and the right drum is the pitch. It gives the tonic pitch. So. This is how it's played and many compositions are in slower tempo and as well as fast tempo. So if the composition is too slow, the inter onset time is too high, then fillers are also used to enrich the theka. Like if it is dha, then, then, dha. So there is a discontinuity between the bowls. So it's filled like So there are fillers to fill in this space to make a continuous and enriched bowl structure and similarly if it's too fast some bowls are omitted and the silence 
is the greatest filler in musicians opinion so if the tempo is like da din din da da din din da da din din da da din din so it's sometimes played like so these are the basic concepts about rhythm and i will just just like to play out the two other tals that would be used in this concert one is jhap tal a 10 bit time cycle it's called de na de de na ti na de de na and the other one is ek tal it's 12 bit cycle den den dhage trek thun na patta dhage trek den na den so uh, talking about the concert arrangement a typical concert arrangement in hindustani music would would look like uh, something like this uh, there is usually a lead artist which sits in the center and there's a drone in the background uh, often played by uh, two acoustic tambouras and here we have uh, iphone giving this, this this drone Uh, the rhythm accompaniment as we have already seen is provided by uh, tabla and in some uh, forms by pakhawaj which is the uh, the big drum the melodic accompaniment uh, is provided by sarangi or uh, harmonium nowadays and uh, some of these instruments we have over here and uh, would just like to play them for like 10 seconds to just give a feel of how the sound this instrument it's called swar mandal it's the indian version of the auto harp so we tune this instruments to the melody the notes of the melody on three octaves to have a uh, environment of the tune started learning this uh, instrument but because of this here we nice to just so how does it sound Oh mm-hmm. 
So there are very strict rules for this. We have to go as gliding as speed as possible. And the next form is khayal that became so popular because their independence is high in terms with respect to Jhopal. So the same route. Uh... 